Okay, so here I have a COK001 board and it was refurbished by Sony. It's got a 65 nanometer RSX installed and you can also see here that the Syscon has been replaced as well. Anyway, the problem with this board is that it had a very tricky fault that took me a while to diagnose. Uh, so I've decided to show how I resolved it and also to demonstrate the importance of correctly interpreting the Syscon error codes. So it arrived to me in the package of consoles marked as junk. It also said that they were untested so there was no way to know what was the true condition of the machine. I expected it to have a YLO default, but to my surprise, when I powered it on the first time, the system actually booted and seemed to be in fully working condition. So the first issue that I spotted happened right after installing custom firmware and trying to run some homebrew programs, uh, particularly Irisman and Multiman. So when I would launch either of these tools, half the time they would simply hang on black screen and wouldn't load. And the only way to quit out of that situation would be to turn the machine off with the power switch in the back. I didn't know what could possibly cause it, because other than that the system was working just fine. So the first thing I did was replace the hard drive, but there was sadly no change. Later I got a tip that this type of black screen freezing could be caused when there's a conflict with, with the Blu-ray drive, because it's one of the checks required in order to run Irisman or Multiman. So I went ahead and swapped out the drive, but unfortunately it didn't help either. I still didn't believe there was anything serious, so I continued to use the machine as normal, that is, until it actually shut down mid-game for the first time. And then also, another day, it gave me YLOD right when I tried to power it on. At that point, I immediately went ahead to look at the Syscon errors. So here you can see the original error log that I dumped when the system first arrived to me. And you can see there are occasional 1701 and a lot of 1001 errors. And if we go to the dev wiki page, we can see that 1701 can mean a lot of different things, but nothing 100% conclusive. The main idea is that something got flagged by the processor as abnormal. However, I also noticed a lot of the 1001 errors, which can be partly attributed to either power loss or a problem with the cell power circuit, such as bad capacitors. So my first thought was to replace the capacitors and sadly that had no effect. So I continued to test the system and finally noticed another problem. Um, so the Blu-ray drive suddenly started having difficulties taking the discs. It also wouldn't always eject them. And that was a good clue to dig deeper towards the drive power circuit. Uh, I immediately assumed that it can only be caused by the MOSFET that is powering the drive, because I used to have another machine where a power MOSFET was burned out and the console wouldn't take or eject the discs. So I replaced this component and seemingly it fixed it. However, a few days later, the old issues returned at random. Uh, at that point, I finally realized to check what is going on with the voltages when it can't take the discs. So I began to measure the voltages going into the drive. There are only two voltage lines. One of them is 12 volts and the other one is 5. The first time I measured them, both of them were good. Uh, like I said, these issues were not constant, they would come and go at random. Uh, eventually, I got it to start glitching again and then turned out that the issue was actually with the 5 volt line and it was dropping out. Sometimes it was showing 0.7 and then going to 3 and then back to 5 volts. So finally, it all made sense. 5 volt line was shorting and causing issues for the programs to load when they would try to identify the drive. When the voltage would go down too much, the drive lost 5 volts logic and uh, wouldn't be able to take or eject the discs. In the worst case, when the line would short out completely, cell processor flagged it as 1701 and Syscon would just shut everything down. So I went to look at the schematic for these voltages and 
note is that the only other component that's involved in the power circuit besides the MOSFET that I have already replaced was a Q6009 bipolar transistor. So I replaced it and finally all the issues were resolved. Um, all the programs would load, the YLODs disappeared and there were no trouble inserting or rejecting the disks anymore. So now if we take a look at the original error codes one more time, we can finally interpret them correctly. So 1701 is the only way that Syscon could report an issue with the voltages on the board. It is unfortunately the only clue you could get and it's very tricky to understand it unless you know what it's trying to say. It's sadly the way some of the errors work. You see, they don't provide the cause of the problem, but rather the result. They can also be very ambiguous, so you need to dig much deeper to find the true cause. So all the other errors, such as 1001, 1004 and 2203, were simply a result of a forced shutdown slash power loss. And you can also confirm that uh, by looking at the dev wiki explanation pages. It's also easy to jump on the assumption and get rid of the capacitors or start reballing the processor, when in reality all this trouble was caused by a failing 5 volts power line that was feeding the Blu-ray drive. Okay, so anyway, I hope you liked this video and perhaps this information can even help somebody facing a similar problem. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.